Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Anki Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? I'm so happy to be here with you today. I am thrilled to bring you this fun Dancing in the Clouds card. Um, I'm using the Zany Zoo and I am having so much fun playing with this adorable bundle. There's a stamp set and there's dies, but you know how I love shape dies and there are, oh my gosh, the possibilities are endless with the things that you can do with this fantastic set. There's matching designer series paper and it is called um, Zoo Crew. If you don't have that, grab a pack, if not two, and it will keep you in little critters for a long time. Um, so if you're going to get the stamp set, um, there's six critters that you can stamp and those six critters are included on the paper so you know how our paper works we get two of each and there's usually six designs but they're double-sided so it gives you 12 designs so if you wanted to use one of everything you have 12 different papers um because there's six critters there's one critter on each design on the critter side of the paper and so you can use the die cuts to cut those critters out on those pieces. The other critters, you just have to fussy cut them out. But let me tell you, they are well worth it. They are super cute. And I have been having the best time using these critters. So let's go ahead and get started and make this really fun card. We're going to use this basic border die, um, the cloud one. I'm going to show you how to go about making our cool cards. So let's go ahead and move everything out of the way. Put that card in the corner. We're gonna need this. And we're gonna need a quarter sheet of um, basic white cardstock. So it's just four and a quarter by five and a half. We need our die cut machine. So let me get it in here. On an angle, it seems to work best for you guys to be able to see everything. Well, maybe we'll do it this way. And bring it up a little. Let's move our card over. Okay, so we use platform number one. And then when we're using metal dies, we need number two, which is kind of like a shim. Um, and then we have two threes. You can see one of mine is clear and one of them is all cut into. That's how I use my die cut machine. I use one and then I flip it over back and forth, back and forth until this one is won't cut very good anymore. Then I make the smooth plate, my bottom plate, and I buy another pack and I just use one of them for the top. And I just keep doing that until I am pleased with everything. Okay, so I'm going to put this in, as you can see, in this direction. We're going to start by angle cutting some clouds. So I'm going to figure out how I want my clouds to look. So I think I'm going to do this one. Mm, yeah. Maybe over a little bit more. Yeah, maybe like that. That'll be good for the first one. And see how I have it a little bit angled? You want to do that. We're just going to try and get some sections of clouds. So we'll start cranking it through. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm going to push it back. And I'm gonna start lifting them out as I finish them and putting them on to my um, surface here on the desk. So for the next one, I think I'm gonna use this end, maybe. And mm, I don't know what I wanna do. I'm just gonna play back and forth, but I want them to be a little bit different. So maybe we'll just make this one like so. And I want to make sure that I get 
Put that in there nice. All right. I'm, I'm moving my mat everywhere, but we'll fix it when we're done. All right, so that's number two. I'll bring it down. And for number three, I think... That we'll do like maybe like that. It doesn't matter. However, you want to do it. I just want to try and get different cloud looks so that they're not layering the same on top of each other and on top of each other. But the little critters are going to cover, so it's really not that critical. I'm probably overthinking. All right, so we're gonna remove that one. And then we're gonna do this last cut. So this last cut, I'm gonna do it kind of high. And I definitely want, <coughs> maybe like that. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I need to drink some water. I think that my um, throat is just dry. <coughs> All right, so we'll put that one in there. And then this will be our last one. So we're going to have four puffy sections of clouds. So I'm going to remove this. I'm keeping this piece. And I'm keeping that. I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to move the die cut machine out of the way. You don't need it anymore. I love how solid and smooth this die cut machine is. Okay, so let's talk. Here's our die. I'm gonna put it back because I don't wanna lose it. It's pretty cool. All right. This set is so fantastic and lends itself to so many cool, sorry guys starting to throw some things around here. <laughs> All right, so these are our pieces in the order that I cut them. Let's move them a little higher so you guys can see. And here's the bottom one, okay? So since I cut a <coughs> four and a quarter by five and a half, and that's what we're trying to fill, I cut a piece of thick, basic white cardstock, eight and a half by five and a half, and we're gonna bring out the scoreboard. <clears throat> we're gonna score it at four and a quarter, and then we're gonna burnish it and fold it in half. Grab my bone folder here. Put our corners together. All right. So what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna fill these pieces onto this card base. And we're gonna leave them lifted a little bit so that we can tuck our critters inside. So the first thing that I wanna do is grab a piece of scrap. So this one I've written on, but it's okay. I don't need, um, that's not a, a problem. And we're gonna start um, coloring in Pool Party and Petal Pink. We'll start with Petal Pink on the bottom. I'm gonna move my card out of the way. We'll grab the small blending brush and this is the one that's gonna get Petal Pink. So I'm just gonna put this card up in the corner and as we finish these pieces, I'm gonna move them up here a little so that I have some room to show you. As we finish these pieces, I will start layering them on this card base. So we're gonna start here at the bottom. We're gonna, I always, you know, rub off before I bring it onto my card. And I wanna have my blending at the bottom of this one, not necessarily from the top. 
I want to leave that top nice and white and crisp. So that's gonna be the first one. And then we're gonna skip one. And then this one is gonna get the peach. So we're doing every other. And again, I'm coming from the bottom. And this petal pink is not really pink, is it? It's peachy, but it's so pretty. And I wanna add a little bit. I just wanna leave the tops white. So make sure you only get the bottom section. Okay, and I'm gonna skip a spot. And then this top piece, which looks like I have a little bit of adhesive or a smudge or something. Let's get my adhesive remover. I always use that to get rid of all the little faux pas. Okay, so this one we are gonna do the top because it's the top section. So we're going to basically sponge the whole piece. It's not very big. And so this one's gonna, the whole piece is gonna be um, petal pink or peach. It is a pretty peach color. All right, so then this is this one. So now we have our two that go in between and we're gonna use Pool Party for that one. And my Pool Party um, blending brush, it was one of the first colors that I blended with. So at the time we only had the large blending brushes. So this one's in the large blending brush. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna blend from the bottom. I'm gonna flip my paper over and I want, this to stay white and I want to put my pool party color at the bottom. So you can bring it into the clouds, you just don't wanna go over the top humps of the cloud, okay? So this one's gonna go here and I think I'm gonna go a little higher on this one side. All right, now that I'm tucking it in, see you're starting to see it form okay and then this is this piece is pretty much going to get mostly pool party remember we only have two pool party pieces so we definitely want that pop from the pool party so this one i don't mind the top getting a little pool party on it but i really want to deposit a nice amount of pool party on my cloud all right so this one's gonna tuck here like that. All right, so now we have our clouds sponged. Let's get the blending brushes out of the way and bring our card in place. We want to start gluing our pieces down <clears throat> and we want to leave room for the different parts of our piece. So I made sure that I glued the sides so that they wouldn't lift and the bottom section, but that the tops were open so that I could tuck pieces. The only one that got glued completely down was this top piece. So we're gonna start with that one. I'm gonna get my um, silicone mat out. And I just decided that I wanted to make like really pretty soft, billowy clouds and these were the two colors I thought of so we're gonna start with this we'll put down our glue don't get too crazy with the glue because there's stitching and so it will seep through the stitching all right I'm gonna grab my um tweezers because I don't want glue all over my fingers although I think it's inevitable I'm gonna bring this over on top here. We're gonna place this one right at the top of our card. And this one is the most important one. I'm gonna move these guys off to the right because I need to be able to make sure that this one has complete placement and that it goes from the top to the bottom. And I think I have a little bit of overhang, which is fine. You know, when we cut some things, they're shorter than others. So there is our piece. Okay, so there is our first piece. It's flat. Now remember, we're gonna tuck our next piece. And when we tuck it, we're gonna glue the two sides down. We want those to be nice and secure, but we want the top to be able to be lifted so we can 
tuck things in there. I'm just gonna start laying the clouds so I can figure out how much distance I'm gonna have right here in between these clouds, okay? So we're gonna just kind of lay them down and kind of overlap them and see how they are gonna look. Pretty. And then this one, we're gonna start at the bottom now. We've gotten that top piece, we'll start at the bottom. And I'm gonna start with this piece. I want to hold it in place here, but this one's gonna be tucked underneath. And so I don't wanna go all the way to the top until I have this one tucked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna mark. No one's gonna see this part, this pencil. It's gonna be underneath the other cloud, okay? So we're, we're marking it in place. And now we can go ahead and put some glue on the bottom of this piece. put it in place and we're going to put on the sides, but we're not going to press the sides too hard. We're mostly going to press the bottom in place because we want to be able to lift the sides temporarily. This glue won't dry that quickly. So I'm not pressing those. Now we can go ahead and attach the three sides, the two sides here and this bottom side. I hope I'm making sense. We don't want to press those sides because the next layer is going to be tucked in and they need a little bit of wiggle room to tuck the next piece in. So there is this one. Make sure that now this one can be pressed. It's definitely staying in place. It's not leaving the spot, but this one has to tuck in. So I, even though I have glue here, I want to be able to still slide this one under. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna really press these sides for this one in place, but I am gonna press the bottom. Once I get those in place, we'll tuck the next section in. I hope it'll make sense as you're watching me. It's a little bit hard to explain, but you just wanna have room to tuck your next layer of clouds in. And then once you have them where you want them, you can push your sides. But this next layer is gonna get tucked, so I don't want the two sides too tucked yet because this has to be able to fit underneath. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So we're gonna go ahead and add on this one as well and up the sides and we're gonna leave the top alone. Now, this one is gonna be a little different. There's gonna be a gap, because remember, we've been tucking. So in that gap, I'm gonna sponge with the, once I've cut the edges, I have to cut all the edges first. I'm a little over on this one end. So then we're gonna sponge with our um, petal pink because it is just soft and pretty and it's gonna be like it's coming down from that top piece. All right, so there is our clouds. They're all ready to go. See that white? I don't want it to be so stark. So that's why I'm just, I'm not even gonna add any adhesive to the car, I mean, to the brush. I'm just gonna use what's left and I'm gonna soften that white edge by just laying some peach down. I don't want it to be stark white. So I'm just pushing that petal color kind of down in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the um, pool party. I'm just gonna add, and then that will soften that whiteness. And it'll look like there's another cloud there, even though it, there isn't. So now we're gonna start placing our little characters and we need to do a little stamping and we also need to tie some ribbon. So there's a few things. So I've used the Give It A Whirl dies. I forgot to pull those out um, prior, but I've used those Give It A Whirl dies and on the inside of the card to add a little bit more clouds and since these clouds were stitched 
I wanted the Give It A Whirl dies to be stitched as well. So I used um, those because they have a nice stitch on them. And as you can see, I've done, I've added some color because the, the pieces, the little critters, they come, but they're not completely colored, okay? So we're gonna add a little color to them. So let's get started with that. I'm gonna um, grab A scrap paper we're gonna start with our blending brushes so our um, hippo she's mostly colored she just her body they let us choose what color we wanted and so I am using smoky slate this hippo is so cute And I'm not getting completely crazy with shading. I'm just coloring one color. And we gotta do her legs and her arm. And then I'm gonna do the center of that flower. This is light smoky slate, it's not the dark. And I like that the animals are semi-colored and that you can add um, extra coloring to them if you want or leave them as they are. They're very sweet, aren't they? I just wanted to give us a little darker to this hippo, so I just went over her a second time. We're gonna add a little yellow center to her flower. Um, I'm using light lemon lolly for that. All right, so she is ready wherever she's gonna end up on the card. And then let's go ahead and do um, the yellow flower, since I have the yellow out on our sheep here. The center is petal pink. And I think this little guy, I don't know what it is, a lemur, I'm not sure, is petal pink. So cute. They're very easy to color though, very quick. Um, and then I've outlined with light um, pool party the lamb because I didn't really want to add a lot of color. I wanted the lamb to be white so I'm just kind of going over um, the different spots and it'll give it just a nice light highlight and then I'm going to add a little gray to the hooves and to the ear center. All right. I think that one's ready. Um, the flower is gonna get dark pool party on this little lemur or whatever it is. I'm not sure if you guys know what this critter is, let me know. I'm not sure if it's a lemur or what it is. We're gonna do peach inside. Oops. I'm gonna add a little bit more peach. A little bit light, there we go. And then the skirt of our 
um, little cheetah here. It's pool party, but the band is petal pink. This really has been so fun to play with these little critters. I'm gonna use my bullet side, I think it's faster. And then for the moose or the, yeah, I think it's a moose inside. We did, let's see, pool party for the flower. The center of the flower. And then lemon lolly for the flower itself. And then I think I did the antlers and the hooves in light smoky slate. All right, you can see how cute the inside is. So we have to do the clouds. We have one lemon lolly, one petal pink, and one um, pool party. So let's go ahead and finish our blending and then we'll put our card together. All right, let me bring my blending um, piece back up. So this one is getting pool party. I thought it was really fun to um, give the clouds some color, right? Because they're gonna be on that white inside of the card. And just adding a little touch of color. I think it brings a lot out of them. This is a really fun set. I've really been having a good time playing with it. There's that one. And then our final color is going to be Lemon Lolly. And I think I have a little bit on this brush, but we'll pick up some more. There we go. Yeah, we don't want it to be too bright. So I'm going to get some of that off of there. I just want a light touch around the edges. There we go. That's pretty. All right, let's finish our stamping here. We're going to do happy birthday to you on our cloud. This one. Make sure I have that nice and straight and that my head is not in the camera. You never know. Happy birthday to you. That's it for that one. And then I think I have on the outside something great to celebrate you. So let's move the little critters out of the way. We're gonna stamp that down here at the bottom and then I can clean my stamp so we can start assembling our card. All right, let's put that down in this bottom section something great to celebrate. Yeah, there we go. Fabulous. All right, let's clean our stamps. The ribbon that I'm using is part of a combo pack. It's part of the suite with the um, Zany Zoo Suite. There's two different ribbons. You get, it's called Ribbon Duo Combo Pack. You get this beautiful um, lemon lime twist and this really pretty petal pink. They have great texture. And I'll show you, there's the petal pink. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's such a pretty ribbon. All right, let's tuck our little guys onto our card. Now they're gonna be lifted with dimensionals. So I will be using minis and regular size, and then I may need some little pieces, but we'll see. 
We'll start with the lemur, who's at the bottom. I'm gonna call it the lemur until you guys tell me that it's not a lemur. <laughs> I don't know, I just see lemur when I see that. Okay, we'll put that one there. We'll put some little ones down the body here. And then for the tail, I'm gonna need to cut um, a skinny piece. You guys know how I cut those little skinny pieces, but it's definitely needed for this tail. Alrighty. I'm very happy with this card and I hope that you guys are too. Um, it is a little time consuming to cut the pieces for the um, for the I can't even think of what I want to say for the clouds but it's well worth it I think. Alright let's put our lemur on first. Just going to get dancing down here on this set of clouds. All right, next comes our cheetah. Let's see, we'll put that one down there. We'll put a small one in each part of her tutu. And maybe up here near her hand sections. And then we'll do big. We'll put one there and one there. Let's pull those off. I really wanted them lifted on the cloud so it looked like they were really like dancing on them on the clouds or among the clouds. So this one I'm going to tuck just her little toe right in that little section which is why I left the tops of the clouds. Okay, so on to our hippo. Let's see. One there. Let's do the little ones first. I think it's easier to put the small ones in. And then I need a long skinny one. arm here. All right, and then we will do two more. Lately, I've been having a time with my mini dimensionals. I don't know why I'm having a hard time pulling the backings off of them, but I seem to be having a time with it, but we're making it work. All right. As long as I don't have dimensional backings all over my floor, I'm a happy girl. So we'll try and keep them off my floor, that's for sure. Um, uh, that's why I like using the take your pick tool, because you pull them off, they get stuck on the take your pick tool, and then you can just purge them right into the trash can. My finger stuck. There we go. All right. Let's put our little hippo up there. She's so cute. I have to put her on her pointy toe. And so I'm gonna tuck her behind here. She's kind of big. So we wanna make sure that her leg is out and that she's kind of tucked Maybe here behind this cloud, her arm, she's dipping down. Isn't she just precious? I really love her. Okay, under, there we go. And then we have our sheep who is dancing among the clouds. All right, let's put that one there. I have a hard time putting them in those points, but 
think I'm gonna do one. Up here. And then we'll do one more on that one section. All right, and then we'll fill in with the big ones. Actually need another one. Right here. Pull the backs off of these. They're a little hard to get off. I don't know why, but they are. All right, maybe because they've been cut. All right, her sheet is going in. She's leaping in the clouds. We're gonna have her kind of tucked right there. Isn't she just the cutest? Look at how sweet they look. Very cute. Okay, so on the inside, we're gonna glue our clouds. Looks like we have a little residue, which is why I love me some adhesive remover. All right, just make sure we got it all and we will open and show you how I have this one set up. So I have our little mousse down in the bottom corner. Let's go ahead and do the mousse first. We're gonna use just our wet glue for all of these. They're just gonna be glued flat. This mousse is so cute. Grab my tweezers. All right, so we're gonna put her down here in this corner. All right, onto the clouds. We'll put our yellow cloud here, and then our happy birthday one. Ooh, we have some thunder happening. I don't know if you guys can hear that. We're gonna have a rainstorm. Always fun. So we'll put our yellow cloud or our lemon lolly cloud there. I think it's pretty to have the clouds inside the card because it carries the theme in. I don't know why I keep putting the cover on my glue. All right, so we'll put this one here. It carries the theme of the outside of the card inside and I like doing that. All right. Add this one kind of in the middle and down and make sure that the happy birthday is straight. All right, so the last step, we're gonna tie our ribbon. So that can always present a challenge. You guys know how that is <laughs> because I'm on camera. So I may be horrible at tying this ribbon. We'll see. <laughs> oh boy. I like to entertain you, that's for sure. <laughs> With all my antics and all my craziness. All right, so we're gonna tie the bow near the top so I have it longer at the bottom because obviously it has to come all the way across, right? But then once I have it up here, <clears throat> I kinda want it to be even. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tie. I think I'm gonna tie a knot and then it'll make it easier for me to tie the bow. All right, I think I left myself quite a bit of extra ribbon here. I don't think I needed this much. Oh, what an awful bow. <laughs> 
Oh, you know me. I have to make sure that it's just right and I will make it behave. So if it doesn't want to, it should know better by now than to try to act out. I will call the mini glue dots in if I have to. Okay, so we're gonna start with that big bow and then you guys know I hold the knot. When I pull, I like to hold the knot. It helps to guide the loops. And then I can pull again. And we'll pull one more time. And I may tie it one more time. I'm not really loving tying a knot on a knot. I think it's the problem. I'm gonna undo it. Sorry guys. All right. And I don't think I need this much ribbon, so I'm gonna bring that in a little. All right. I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try having it shorter on this side and see if that will help me because something's wrong for sure. I just gotta figure it out. I can always slide the ribbon in place where I want it once I have done my bow. Yeah, I didn't like that extra knot there. It was too much and then it didn't wanna tie. That's I think what my problem was. So I put the extra on the other side this time. And I think this is exactly what I need. I'm gonna pull this one through. This one's gonna remain the size that I want it. And we will pinch that. I'm gonna make the loop just slightly smaller. You guys know I like smaller looped bows. And then we're gonna slide it into place here at the top. So pretty. So I'm going to pull and then I'm going to puff. That's how I make my bows pretty once I have um, cut them. Once I have positioned them is I puff them up. Okay and we're going to just trim just a hair I should grab my ribbon scissors, but I'm being lazy. And this is my paper scissors, so they may not cut very well. All right, there's my ribbon. I am very happy, but I am gonna put a glue dot just to make sure that it behaves. Okay, so we'll ball one up. And also it'll keep my ribbon in place and it won't slide around my card. So put one down there to situate my Alrighty, pretty, awesome. What do you guys think of this project? I hope that you enjoy it. Again, Zany Zoo, give it a world eyes for the clouds. I don't have them out here right now, but give it a world eyes. Zany Zoo bundle, basic borders. You guys know how much I love the borders. Any shapes, I'm a sucker for them. I hope that you enjoyed um, watching me make this card. I will see you guys on Tuesday, but as always, I have plenty of inspiration on my website, inkyhandswarmhearts.com, so check that out as well. And I will see you next time. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!